All right, here you go. I, I had done this topic like two, maybe three times already, but it's I'm a science fiction writer. It is sci-fi. It is what it is. This topic keeps coming back. Um, and I, just, I think I'm going to just hit it directly, and I want to go a little deeper. Um, I'm going to be talking uh, in this blog about the differences in Afrofuturism, Afrofuturism, African futurism, and what I expect kind of from it all, from the, from the whole conversation, you understand? Um, we have been talking about Afrofuturism, and I forgot the gentleman who coined the term, who actually takes credit for it. I don't know if it was around before him, maybe it was never published. It doesn't seem like a rocket scientist term to have coined, but he definitely gets credit for it. Um, he coined the term Afrofuturism, and it's popular real now, right now. Um, however, I think it's problematic, all right? So maybe that'll be the title, The Problematic or the Problems with Afrofuturism. One, it comes either from the term Afro, which is a hairstyle, not a people. Um, it is a hairstyle that uh, African Americans and African people wear, but it's not, um, it, we're not Afro people. Uh, the other thing, uh, the other origin from it could be a play on Euro futurism, which is really not a thing. I never heard of that, but maybe I'm coining that term, Euro futurism. Uh, but the Aro, Afro, Euro. Uh, we deal with that Euro, the Afro in Afrocentricity, which is another term that is either from Afro or Euro, because they definitely have Eurocentristic and Eurocentricity, so um, we don't want to come after them. So if anything, we are Afrocentricity or Afrofuturism. We are the first people, we, you know, even if it's their language, you know, we still come first. So we don't take our name and spin it. Um, you wouldn't say Indio futurism. You wouldn't say Chinio fut futurism. You would say Afro futurism. So we're not taking our name after them. We come first. Um, so that's just my little vent on the name, okay? Because I use Afrofuturism. Don't get me wrong, um, but I think it's a uh, I think it's a term that needs to be corrected. Um, I call myself Afrofuturistic. Afro, Afro I'm an Afrofuturistic writer. Maybe it's hard to say. Maybe that's why they they said Afrofuturism. I'm an Afrofuturist, and um, I call myself that. But um, I don't mind being called Afrofuturist because that's what everybody else hears. And all these categories and terms are for marketing purposes. Marketing is for you to tell people about whatever product you have for them to be interested in buying it. It's not gossip, it's not word of mouth, it's a specific means of communicating to somebody. It's information about a product and it's information about a service to get people to want to to, to consumers, to get consumers. So anyway, that's the term. Now, the controversy around the term. Um, and I'm going to get all the names wrong, which I always do, but um, when I post it, I'll Google the names and get them right, mostly because I'm driving, and two, because I don't remember everybody's name. Now, there was an article by a South African African fantasy and science fiction writer um, from South Africa, right? And she said that, you know, there's a difference between uh, African writers and African American writers. Totally get that. You know what I'm saying? But um, sometimes writers or people who are called something other than they want to be called um, get have an attitude sometimes, get a little frustrated about it. So I think in her uh, article, she saw it as a little condescending towards African-American 
science fiction writers or the African American genre, right? Um, now, my opinion on that is, like I said, sometimes you you call one thing, and you know, uh, I'm in Miami. You know, a lot of these, uh, a lot of Caribbean, Black Caribbean immigrants don't like to be called African American. Okay, they get mistaken for African American because we're in America and we all the same damn people. We just speak with a different language, uh, slant on a different language, right? We eat a little bit different food and we dress a little bit different. So that's it. You know, our cultures are pretty much the same, although we don't know each other's cultures all the time and we think they're so different from each other. And that's the same thing with South Africa. You know, she's, you know, well, how dare you call me African American? Whoa, whoa, I'm South African. I have my own expression of sci-fi, right? Um, now, let's all lay down. We all bow down to Octavia Butler. Octavia Butler is an African American. So they all fall from the same African American tree. So it's not no African that put us on the map. This subgenre of science fiction was birthed by Octavia Butler. We all gonna fall down. I'm falling down to the female gender as an African American, and Africans from the motherland have to fall down to an African American woman who who popularized this. There was writers writing Afrofuturistic stories before her. There was ones that was around at the same time as her. However, her stories took off, and she became our primary. Um, godmother uh, pioneer of this genre so we gonna give her the props you understand we can argue she was the first ain't no argument she ain't the first but she the one that put it on the map so Octavia Butler gets that and we all bow down to that next so uh, we got that clear that's my position on it right so next um, there was another controversy of uh, Indy Okafor was uh, African from Nigeria, right? She got upset and got in her feelings and said, "How dare you call me? I don't know if I don't know if Nigerians go all like, you know, if they don't get Shaniqua and stuff like that, you know." But um, she got up in her feelings and was like, "Well, how dare you call me? You know, African American, uh, African uh, Afro futuristic writer." I don't even want to be called, okay? I don't even want to be called the same term as them, okay? So let's get that right. And she says she don't like when writers interview her and ask her how it feels to be an Afro-futuristic writer. She said, I write from Nigeria. How dare you think I have the same dreams and imaginations as African-Americans? You know what I'm saying? And I think it was the offense that she took in being called Afro-futuristic that makes African-American writers like, what the hell's the problem? Chill. God damn, it ain't that bad. You know what I'm saying? Sheesh. We all science fiction writers. How about that? At least they got half of it right. We all futuristic writers. How about that? Sheesh. Ain't nobody saying you from North Carolina. I ain't from North Carolina. I'm not an Afro-North uh, North Carolina black writer. We all got subcultures and variations. New York is different from LA. Miami is different from, you know, Ohio. So chill. We ain't none of us are hundred percent the same. We don't want to get into that island mentality. Now, all of that said, I'm clearing up the beef, right? My opinion on the beef is the attitude about the beef is wrong. Now, is there um something cool about recognizing variations? You damn skippy. Why? Hell, now this is where this is where I come from. I, reading uh, Indy Okafor's Venti series, I was like, you know what? It's not empowering enough for me. My tribe of African Americans, we've been whipped by white people. You know what I'm saying? And and we've been fighting white people in a different way than they have fought on the motherland. So my attitude is, yo, we fighting back. We would, we've been beat down by white supremacy. We were made to think we weren't crap. We were made to think that we couldn't be president. We couldn't be doctors in light of being doctors, in light of being hidden figures. They were hiding our mathematicians. 
You understand? So they made us think we was nothing. So I'm not going to be in, I'm not me, I'm not writing a story like Bente where the technology is of a foreign element to Africans or to black people and they have some innate magic Negroness connection to the technology. No, my people make the technology. If anything, that's why when I when I talk about the greatest science fiction book, I'm talking about Zorro, a tale of alien Avengers, where the technology is from the Africans from space. And they come to Earth and they regulate stuff where the Europeans or the white people on the planet were people that they had conflict with in space and they beat their planets down. So when they came to Earth and saw that they were oppressing or on top of of, of black people, they was like, no, these are our descendants. Those are the descendants of the people that we beat. So we going in and that's empowering because they shut down whatever this trilateral commission was. This book was written in the nineties. So they had the big trilateral commission back then. And so that was the big thing. So um, for me, that's empowering. I'm not coming from some little small, like I jokingly, right? I jokingly, and I own it. I'm going to own it. I call the story Space Babar. And why do I say it? Because Babar is some racist, dominating, white dominating crap where they took some elephant out of Africa and brought him to Europe, educated him, put him in a suit and little jacket and little um, vest, three-piece suit action and a top hat and a cane and then he comes back to his little elephant village in Africa and wants to teach them some damn manners when they had the whole history reversed it was Africans, the Moors and others who taught the um, Italians how to bathe cured them of their dang on black plague when they came to Africa we was being oppressed by the Arabs right, we was being oppressed by the Berbers you know if you read Things Fall Apart by Chino Achebe you know what I'm saying? You'll see that that's what was going on. So when the Europeans came there, they was just coming out of their black plague. They didn't have no strength and power. They weren't even no threat. Same as when they came to the Native Americans here in America. When they were coming to America, they couldn't even survive. The first Native, first Europeans was eating each other after the cold winter. They ain't even survive. So the Native Americans, just like the Africans, didn't really think there was any kind of threat. That's not my history. That is history. Okay, so when you come from a when you come from an African American sci-fi writer, we better know our history because we don't want to forget our history because we don't want to repeat our history. So we put that into our sci-fi. So when somebody say, "Yo, I'm from Nigeria. I'm from South Africa," it ain't like African American sci-fi. Well, damn it, it ain't like African American sci-fi because you're not possessing. The, uh, uh, experiences. It ain't in your DNA. There's a difference between colonization and slavery. We was enslaved. We was uh, oppressed. Our minds was washed. We got black people that don't think black looks good. It ain't just, you know, skin fading. These is black people that ain't think jack. I've met them. I know people like that. We, we had Black History Month just to educate people to who they were, to their greatness. A lot of black people don't even want to go back to Africa now because they don't know anything about it. They don't even know to be proud of it. So now it's that's a difference. Now I know I've been to Africa, so I know the greatness of my, my motherland, right? So when African American when African writers write sci-fi, they better bring some awareness that I don't have. I have to study you know, uh, Yoruba. I have to study uh, uh, different uh, um, Nubian tribes, Kemet, and other things. I have to study the Zulus. If you from the Zulus, that's your first-hand history. You don't got to study it. You just got to remember what your grandfather, what your elders told you in your village. You got to walk around the corner. So, yeah, you, you was colonized. You was shot. King Leopold and the Arabs ran through Northern Africa, and we was beat down. Trust me, I know our history, and I'm still learning it on the motherland. Colonization was definitely no joke. My other side of the history, here in America, the Native Americans was beat down. That's my other family, you know, okay? I got, I got Cherokee and Seminole in my blood, right? So on, on the other side, we was beat down. 
But it's your job to learn your history. So when when Indy Okafor and this lady from South Africa write, they better bring that Zulu energy. She better bring her, uh, uh, um, if she's not uh, Ashanti, uh, her Yoruba, whatever um, tribe she's with in Nigeria, you got to bring that element. I'm using Christianity. That's how I was raised, right? And I'm learning my deities in Yoruba. I'm learning my deities in, in on the Nile Valley, you know what I'm saying, in other parts of Africa. But you was raised in that. So your science fiction should be on some other level than just mine. You understand what I'm saying? Your your science fiction should be on another level than than mine. You should have a different energy of 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 intertwining spirituality, right, and technology. That's why I want to read their books. But I, I don't want them to fall for the okie doke. Europeans are one tenth of the earth population. If you need pride, then come to America and take a Black History Month, go to some Black History Month celebrations so you can see how great our people are. I don't want to read no subsidiary you know, uh, 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 um, African story on uh, our Africans. I, as an African American, it may be true that you know we are still oppressed. It may be true that you know our countries still um, are inferior tech, not technology. Let's say uh, they're not superpowers, right? It may be true that China and other foreign countries. Uh, European countries are still exploiting us, so we are still at some sort of war. That may all be true, all right? I'm going to see that on a documentary. I'm going to see that when I look through the news. I don't want to read that in my futuristic speculation. My futuristic speculation is I'm free because I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. So that's really my message to Indy Okafor when I meet her. Yo, it is what it is. I thought it was a a, a, a weaker story. You understand? I, I remember I think of if we're standing on the feet of Octavia Butler who put strong superhero female characters. They were stronger than the men and we applaud her for that. And we understand why she was doing the hell. I understand it. You understand, many of us embrace our feminism, right? You know, we're, we embrace and applaud our black girls rock, right? So we understand why they so standing up because in this westernized world of America, our women, and not only our women, but women have been oppressed and held down to men in addition to being black. So for uh, Octavia Butler to, to respond to that, and it echo and reverberate through not only females, and I can say here's Wild Seed. I can hear, I can say here's Kindred. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Lilith, Lilith's Pride. I think that's the name of it because um, it's a three book series, right? I can give that to a young girl and say, Yo, you can think better of yourself. Read this book. You understand? That's because she writes with that energy in her. You understand? She writes with that that. That connection, that purpose of empowerment. And that's what I want to read when I read books from people from the Zulu tribe. That's what I want to read when I read from people from Nigeria. Y'all got that rich history. Biggest, one of the biggest countries, population of black people in Africa. You know what I'm saying? You better hold it down. All right, no, no, no weak character. We're going to be the first in space. And when we get to space, we're going to meet our brothers and sisters, because we from outer space. We uh, we are celestial beings. How about that? Anyway, yo, know, my soapbox is over. Um, I actually didn't know what I was going to say, but um, again, this is, you know, the future of Afrofuturism and this whole conversation. All right, y'all. Peace.